iOS 18 Developer Beta 4 was released a couple days ago, and it came in at 1.38 gigabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro. Now that's not too bad. It does have a few updates, nothing major. The Apple intelligence stuff still is not in here, even though Apple is still touting that it's coming in a future update soon. Now, I believe they have backdraft on some stuff to come even later than what they were originally saying, but right here they did update their website that says, get ready, Apple intelligence will be available in an upcoming beta. So hopefully we will see that in the next beta, which will be beta five but we'll just have to keep waiting and see what Apple ends up doing with this Apple intelligence features. And we'll find out which ones we get this year versus what all we'll have to end up waiting for later on. So a few things that came in the last beta that have just been kind of improved upon is the dark mode with icons. So before it was only the Apple icons that would turn dark. Now Apple has done really well at turning all of them dark. So if I go ahead and enable dark mode right now, you will see everything just went dark. The only app that I have that kind of just doesn't is this one right here. And that's my smart ring app. I believe maybe because it has a couple different colors in the icon, it just can't obviously um, Instagram and a few others that are full color don't change. But for the most part, I mean, the YouTube one changes. My clear one gets updated. Um, and of course, if we go here, you can see all of the different updates. If I go ahead and go back and turn dark mode off, this is what they normally look like. I love that Apple is doing this without requiring developers to actually update their icons. This is just a great feature. And the fact that we get it all right away is just really nice. If I do come in here and I customize the icons before going back and forth in dark mode in beta three, sometimes things would get stuck. Sometimes they wouldn't, but now everything seems pretty fluid on here with how quickly it actually updates. The widgets are also working better before if the wallpaper was dimmed, they could get kind of stuck in a mode and would not change. So it's nice to see that they've actually fixed that bug that was kind of annoying, but everything works really smoothly now where before changing info, changing things around would cause just a little glitches here and there. So it's really nice to see that everything is working much better than it was in the past. Now there was one app icon that did get a little bit of a redesign. I mean, it's very small and that is with the stocks app. So there are little lines that go all the way through the app. Those got dimmed down some, so those don't stick out as much. And like the little graph line did get a little bit thicker. I think the blue line may have gotten thicker as well, but not much of an update there, but just something did happen there. So I just wanted to let you guys know what that was. Also with Control Center, we do have a few changes here. So if I go in and I add a control, the music has been removed, which must be a bug. So before we had an option to um, launch the music app, which was really nice, especially maybe not so much in the control center because you know you can have access to your apps, but this also worked on the lock screen itself. You could actually change one of these to that same music little icon and it would just launch straight directly into music. That was really nice to have, and those are now gone. So hopefully that must just be a bug. I'm sure Apple will add it back. Along with that, we do have a new item that also could be a bug, and that is this Bluetooth power toggle. So as of right now, it actually just doesn't do anything. So if I try to go ahead and add it in, you can see it just adds in a blank icon and doesn't actually perform any actions. I'm really hoping that this gives us the ability to turn Bluetooth on and off so we don't have to like come into here to actually do anything with Bluetooth because this stuff doesn't like, I mean, you can't really, like I can kind of disconnect things from Bluetooth, but that still doesn't turn it off. So if I go into settings real quick, you can see that if I go all the way back, all the way back under Bluetooth, Everything's not connected, but Bluetooth is still technically on. So it would be cool just to have that ability to quickly turn Bluetooth fully off rather than just kind of disable it or whatever this does. So something there, maybe it turns into something or maybe it was just Apple kind of 
accidentally leaving it in place. So we'll have to wait to see what that is. A uh, few other things that got updates on here is with the clock. So the alarm used to be filled in, the clock itself was filled in, that got changed. The timer got a little bit thicker and the stopwatch also was filled in. The little clock right there was filled in as well. And that is now just kind of more of a outline. So those were the other updates that I saw. I did actually forget about a couple new items here that I did not see earlier. There is now a eye tracking option for anybody with that accessibility that needs it. They can now add that and enable eye tracking or not. Also the shortcut app is larger now with the actual, it just says shortcut in it. I'm guessing if I go ahead and add this one, I can probably customize it to a certain shortcut. So if I want this to do, um, let's just say Bible for now. If I go in here, I'm guessing it changes to the word Bible. And then if I click this, it's gonna act, open up the Bible app that I had that shortcut actually perform. So that's kind of nice. You can actually see it rather than just have the little glyph there the because the shortcuts all use similar glyphs and not everybody customizes those. So we now have that ability to just have the word there so we know what shortcut that that shortcut will be running. A lot of stuff is just working more fluid. Like going back and forth between these, the animation's just way better. And then interacting with things as well. Things just seem to be kind of getting that final polish that it will need before the update is released to all the public. The app library itself, I feel like this could also be a bug. If you use the hidden folders, that got a new look. Used to, it was a little eye with a cross. Now it's just like blank icons. I feel like this was a bug. So, and the icons themselves kind of hover over themselves, which makes me even think more that this is a bug. But if I go ahead and unlock those, you can see I have a couple apps in there that I've just been testing out. That just feels like an overall bug. I expect that they probably will change or update that glyph that was there before with the with the eye. I don't feel like what they have in beta four is the final rendition of what that's gonna look like. Another thing inside the settings app is, so before, if you wanna go to iCloud, you would click on your face and then come down into iCloud right there. Now there is another way to get into this that could be a little faster, may not be because you have to scroll down. You will see now we have an iCloud right here. So if I tap that, we do get right back into that same page. You also may have noticed that this animates now. So if you are a subscriber of iCloud, if you pay for storage, you will get that little animation. So that's kind of nice. So I'll go ahead and show it again. Let me get closer and show it one more time. So something, I mean, once again, this isn't much. This is kind of like more of the final touches that they're working on. That is kind of still nice to see that they added another little area because I know there's a lot of people that are confused by the icon right here and they don't know that's how they get into their iCloud settings. As somebody that helps a lot of family members with support, this has been one of the things that's like, okay, you gotta tap on your face or your avatar icon and then you'll find the iCloud setting. Now I can just tell them to scroll down until they see iCloud, or most likely there's a good chance they can find it themselves, which will be even greater. Also in here, if I go into apps and I go down to messages, um, they've added more support for the RCS, which is the more standard way to send text messages uh, that will work better with Android. So you may see that your carrier now supports it. Mine does which is visible. So it's really nice to see that I have that ability to turn this on. Before this item wasn't even showing, so that's great to see. I believe they've added some UK carriers as well. I know Rogers was on a list that I've heard of, but I'm not sure what other carriers, but you may wanna go ahead, if you're running the betas, you may wanna go ahead and check to see if RCS is there. By default, it should be turned on. You probably also wanna leave that on because it is a really nice feature to have. I am very happy that mine is finally up and running. Not that I talk to too many Android people. They just don't tend to like me. It's still, if I do have to talk to one and send them a picture or a video, those will come through in higher quality or if they send me them as well. So that is great to see. 
Now CarPlay has also gotten an update. I've heard that we have new wallpapers in that, which is kind of nice to match with the iOS 18 flow. I'll be honest, I didn't even know in CarPlay that you could change the wallpaper until I heard that there was new ones in iOS 18. It's just not something I've ever even looked into doing on my vehicle with CarPlay. Now that I know that, I am gonna change it so that way when my phone is connected, it looks a little bit different than when my wife's is connected. Overall, the performance has been a lot smoother. Everything seems to be working really well. We're getting to where Apple has finally polished most of those features, and hopefully that means that the Apple intelligence is up next. So with the website showing that it's coming soon, I really think we're gonna see it really, really soon. I think the next beta update, if they don't even, they might could even enable it before then, but we'll see that new Siri, because right now, Siri activates the exact same. Hopefully we'll get a lot, but like I said, performance, animations have been way better these last couple of days than they were with any of the betas before this. And battery life has actually done really well as well. So right now I'm at 71%, but if I come down or if I go back and then I go to battery up here, you'll see my battery health is normal. Um, last charge, to 100% was at 9.18 this morning. So I've had my screen active for five hours and 19 minutes, screen idle for five hours and 11 minutes. So overall, it's worked really well. So that's really nice to see. My battery health is at 96%, which is still great for a device of almost a year old. And my cycle count is 293. Battery health is still normal, so that's all good to see. But like I said, overall, this has been a really nice update to see. Not a ton of like overall new features, but just a lot of polish that's been happening. And that is actually a really good thing to see because that means Apple intelligence should be just around the corner. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.